you know, looking at the macro thesis, you, you're going, right, battery grade lithium is required. We pr- don't have enough of it. We're going to have to find new ways of uh, producing it um, to, you know, fulfill the demand that's coming down the line. Okay, so we're all on the same page there. So where do you look first? Because if I'm an investor, I'm going, I'm hearing story, there are people who are pro-lithium, pro-hard rock, pro um, clays, it, 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 sorry, brines I meant, sorry, brines, hard rock and clays. It, everyone's got their own favorite. I mean, where do you sit or do you think it's all of the above? I love all my children. Really? I don't have a favorite. <laughs> Both of them. Um, I, I've said this many times and been criticized by even some people that have been on this show that the world will maintain a relative balance between brine, hard rock, and then later on sedimentary, which is what I call clay because a volcanologist named Tom Benson told me I should be doing that. It was more proper. And he's got a, he's got degrees from Stanford, MIT, and some other highfalutin school. So I, I, I follow her. So shout out to you, Tom. Uh, You're going to, you're going to see in the, in the future, because let's just look at the cost curve for a sec. And this is where this is the, the genesis of that whole argument. The lowest cost hydroxide right now is produced from raw material that comes from the green bushes mine, which is the creme de la creme of hard rock in Western Australia. So Abomaro and Tanchi own it. So de facto, with they transfer, you know, the way they the way they operate that JV, they transfer it to uh, themselves on a pro rata basis and uh, a little bit of oversimplification, but their cash cost is the lowest cash cost for lithium hydroxide. Ergo, the, the Western Australians like to say, well, hard rock is lower cost. Well, it's the lowest cost, but if I was going to sidle somebody up next door on the cost curve, it wouldn't be the next hard rock guy. It would be my former employer, Livent, who produces lithium carbonate, then lithium hydroxide. But if you look at where they sit on the carbonate cost curve and what the conversion cost is, the cost curve is mixed by project. So you can't make the sweeping assumption that just because the lowest hard rock guy is the lowest cost guy, that the next lowest cost hard rock guy, and and, you know, the, the whole narrative on ESG and that it's more sustainable, that's nonsense too. (laughs) Let's just put it out there. Because if you start doing the carbon footprint on mining in WA and loading it up in a boat and taking it to the coast of China and moving it inland and converting it and then shipping it out and do do a real honest carbon footprint, it's, you know, I... I'd say I'd like to see the you know life cycle analysis studies of that because you can you can pretty much get quali- what's called qualified people to sign off on anything. I mean, the next thing I know that donuts will be the, the best route to uh, low cost lithium chemicals. I mean, I've seen PFS and DFS, none of them qualify for the nonfiction list on the New York Times. I mean, if you go if you and and this is what we were talking about before we started that. That's what I learned when I got into the kind of junior world is there's a lot of smarmy juniors out there and you, you can get everybody that hasn't been uh, hasn't produced commercially is on the low end of the cost curve. It's only after <laughs> they come into production that the. Uh, it's, it's interesting. So we, we were talking um, to one of our guests this morning. Um, a guy helps us with the uranium, uh, uranium series. I say helps us. He, he is the uranium series. This guy called Brandon Monroe. Very smart guy. Um, and we were talking about some analysis that was done um, by the Canadian Se- uh, Securities Association on presentations from companies, right? And out of 150 presentations, only I think it was only 18% actually met the qualification of, uh, you know, uh, oh God, I've forgotten how they, they, they qualified, but it's 18% had no serious or major mis- it, and it was in a relevant range. Of yeah, things. you know, and I say, and by that I mean, you I know, used to do ca- I used to do capital audits in my old book. Right, so it's kind of I, I I wanted to get the phrase right. It clearly fails, but they were saying, you know, companies overstate the significance of what they've got, especially in their case. They were saying out of the 170 uranium companies currently, only 22 kind of fell within their guidelines 
of, 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 of meeting what would be um, an economic mine, despite what the companies say. So I, I get what you're saying here. In the, in the world of lithium, you know, miners generally, that people do overpromote and overstate a lot. Um, but, but sort of coming back to, you know, where, you, where you're looking, you love all your children, great. But... I, the, the, the industry needs all the hard rock that WA can produce. Right. The industry needs all the brine South America can produce. And then you have to look to, you know, take a standard lithium who has an interesting project using a bromine stream. And that's, in my mind, probably going to be, and I have no financial relationship with standard lithium. So all you haters don't need to, you know, put anything on my tweets. Uh, you, you see standard and it's just a unique situation and they're partway there and they're not out overselling it and their partner. And this is the other point I would make is if you're investing, you want to see companies with solid partners. You have Lanxis. Lanxis is a big German chemical company. That's their bromine operation. And they, they can, they have a lot of chemical skills to bring to bear. I mean, a junior, Hiring the kind of people you need on these projects is it's not cheap and there is there's a dearth of talent. So talent for the lithium industry has to be grown. I mean, people can say, well, that's simple acid based chemistry. But I think the last 10 years of projects has proven it's not that easy. And so I, it's the same thing with the Lithium Americas. They got Gangfen as a partner and, and that helps. Uh, and as you go forward, I think that's that's going to be a bit of the model is that uh, if you're a junior, you, you better find either a deep pocketed, <laughs> a battery company that has patience and deep pockets or a cathode maker. Well, a cathode maker said not to have deep pockets. <laughs>